Hi, I'm Tiffany Tang, the creator and writer of Justice Angel comic book series. I have here is issue one, two, and three. Issue four will be released this fall. Um, now we, um, I'm starting a film project for Justice Angel since it was uh, premiered at the uh, Phoenix Comic Con and New York Comic Con and had a huge turnout. It was uh, a lot of huge fans came and bought the book and um, I was very pleased and happy that uh, the fans where we were talking about it and uh, talking about a movie version and uh, and so therefore I, I skip it, skip it, skip it. Um, we can skip that and just say what else. Are you, well, let's let's talk about um, let's talk about first just your fan base. Let's just okay. focus on fan base. Fan base, fan so base. Just talk to me about your fan base. Okay. Um, the buzz. The buzz. Okay. So we. Um, I exhibited the comic book at the Phoenix Comic Con and New York Comic Con, and it did a, it did a, uh, it had a huge turned out. It was a huge buzz. We have a huge fan base too. Uh, the book right now currently is in around Phoenix, Arizona, and in Flagstaff and Tucson, Seattle, San Francisco, uh, L.A., Burbank, and also in Chicago, and it's also available online. So uh, with this huge fan base um, and turnout and feedback. I decided to make a feature film because this is a good story that uh, I think the fans will love to see in a movie, uh, movie theater. So um, I gather all my friends together. My uh, I call Kara Willoughby, who is my casting director and producer friend, and uh, call um, my friend Joe Estevez and Jack Ong, who both are actors that I uh, I illustrated. I have illustrated them into the story. And also, I call my uh, costume designer, Tai Wing, who designed a costume for the Phoenix Comic Con and New York Comic Con. And uh, with this wonderful team, we're putting together, we're working together to raise the funds on Kickstarter. And um, with this funds, it will help us get the movie started and uh, with name actors and uh, distribution in place. So, uh, with your help, um, with Let's see what else? Uh, incentives, right? Rewards. How do, how do I insert that in? Oh, well, you already covered the buzz, so we can okay. stop there. You're, okay. you're going into the other parts, but. So let's talk about. Um, Incentive? Yeah, let's. Yeah, With your help, you get an autograph, whatever, right? Yeah. Okay. Cover the incentives. Now I'm sweating. Can you, tell? can you see I'm sweating? Please tell me you don't see me sweating. You Thank can. you. Yeah, okay. You can. <laughs> I'm so sweating. Okay, um, with your donation at uh, certain levels, you'll be, get, you'll be getting um, this autograph comic books, uh, issue one, two, and three, or if you donate higher, then you get to be on a set or be extra, uh, extra in the, on set, or get the chance to meet the actors and, um, and um, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And, okay, I should say something about me directing, right? Let's let's go back and do that over again as far as coming on the, the incentives. So okay. they get to get oh, autographed books, they get their name in the credits, they yeah. get to be on set, uh -huh. they get to meet the actors. Get to meet, see me draft. And have fun. And have fun. And have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. With your donation, you'll get um, the comic book, autograph, uh, the three issues or fourth issues. Uh, Come, okay, with your day, uh, with your donation, you'll get the comic book, um, or you will get. Oh, come on, let me say this right. Okay, with your donation, you'll get the autograph comic books, or you get to be on set, be a background extra, or you get to uh, meet the actors and have fun and watch the the cast perform and uh, me direct the film. Um, but most of all, you get all the incentive and even DVD copies when once the movie is done. All right. What else? I mean, that's it for as far as the incentives. Okay. So let's stop that and we can let's let's say the part. Um, do you want to talk about you directing? Like, talk about your passion? Why you want to direct this? Are you serious? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, you know, Are you but people you don't know, they don't know. Do they care? Do they, would they want to care? Would they want to know? I don't think so. Well, these are little vignettes. Think, okay. think more than just the, the video. I don't think they care, the but okay. 
I don't think they care. I think they care about the books. I mean, okay. Think about DVD extra, like, you know, that type of thing, too. Um, okay. With your donation, you will help us put a... Okay. How do I start in with that? I don't get it. How do I say it? As far as your passion to direct this film? Yeah. Talk I don't want to say the, that. You don't want to talk about that? Yeah, no. that's too... That's too needy. Too needy and greedy. <laughs> Oh, you're okay. You're looking. Don't talk about raising money. I'm just talking about why would you? Why would you care to write a book like this or to? Write okay. A, oh, like, let me talk about what the story is about. The art, yeah, the okay, story, okay. why you're doing okay, it, what okay. you care about. Yeah, okay. Yeah, All right. Let me just start with Chess's Angel. Okay. I'm gonna say uh, I'm totally dang crazy. Okay. Let me tell what the story is about. Let me start from the beginning, introducing myself, and maybe that helps too. Okay. 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 I'm Tiffany Dang, the creator and writer of Chess's Angel. Uh, the story I wrote back in 27, and basically the character, Justice Angel herself, she's my alter ego, and that's how it started out. Uh, it's about this little girl who grew up without, uh, with her parents living in Chinatown in New York, and one night her parents were uh, murdered, so she ending up have to go to temple. Uh, her mother, her grandmother, took over the family business and sent her to the temple, and that's where she learned. She was that's where she. At the temple, that's where she learned uh, about life and death and the philosophy of life and death, basically. And at the age of 18, she leaves the temple and go back home living with her grandmother. And from there, she blossomed and became a young woman who... Hi, I'm Tiffany Dang, the creator and writer of Justice Angel comic book. And I um, have... I wrote issue, issue right now. It's currently issue one and issue two and issue three, and it's available online on my website, just as ancient comic book .com, or you can get it in the comic book stores located throughout Phoenix, Flagstaff, Tucson, Seattle, Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Tiffany Dang. I'm the creator and writer of Just as Angel comic book. It's a story about this girl who was raised by the monk in New York, and she grew up to become a um, fighting for justice. And this comic book I uh, wrote back in 20, it was released in, 20, tw in 2013, and we exhibited in Phoenix Comic Con. Hi, I'm Tiffany Deng, the creator and writer of Justice Angel comic book. It's a story about a girl who was raised by the monk in New York, and she grew up to become a uh, fighting for justice. And uh, I released, I published this book in 2012, and uh, we exhibited in Phoenix Comic Con and New York Comic Con. It did very well. We have a huge turned out and a huge fan base. And uh, there was a huge buzz about it too. So I'm very happy each year I go to the Comic Con. Uh, with this feedback, I decided to do a feature film on Justice Angel. So I called all my friends to come together and work with me to make this movie. And with this movie, we we're trying to raise funds. Uh, and by starting reason, we're doing it on Kickstarter. And um, so I call in my friend um, Kara Willoughby, who is the producer and casting director, my friend Joe Estevez and Jack Ong, who I also illustrated them in a comic book. And, um, and also my friend Tai Nguyen, who is a costume designer, who designed a costume that has been worn for the, at the Phoenix Comic Con and New York Comic Con. And with this Kickstarter, uh, with your donation, you will get some uh, wonderful rewards. Um, certain rewards would be like the comic books, uh, just the ancient one, two, three, and four, and autograph too. Or some rewards would be um, you get to be on a movie set, um, be an extra in a movie. You get DVD copies. You get um, to hang out on set, get meet the actors, and watch a shoot behind the the scene. And uh, it will be fun once you're on set and uh, see all the actors. So any donations, uh, we would really appreciate it and um, help us to make this movie become a reality. Thank you. Thank you for your donations. Um, any amount, we really appreciate it. Okay, thank you for your donations. Any amount, we really appreciate it. Thank you for your donation and stay tuned to hear about updates. The reason I created a female protagonist in the comic book or the screenplay is because I grew up without any female idol. Um, and at the time, I felt that Wonder Woman was too old for me. I didn't really click with her because I didn't understand how she become that person except that she has superpower. To me, I'm just a human being. I don't have superpower. 
So how do I become a protagonist? So within me, I felt that, well, why can't I become like one woman but without the superpowers and still be able to go out there and defend myself and fight off the criminals or the bad guys or whatever. So that character became my alter ego and from there I wrote the story just as Angel. And just Angel is not just me, it represents anyone, any female, even a man. I mean I didn't have a man who came and bought the book and said to me that he is just an angel, which is kind of weird for me to hear because he say, because he goes, I am just an angel too, and I go, well, that's wonderful because all of us can be just an angel. We can become this person and fight for what we believe in, and that's why I created just an angel. Just an angel, it's pretty much more. Um, she's a symbol of, of, to me, she's a symbol of justice, and it, it's something that come out from your your heart and what, and I guess the principle of it in your heart, that's how I see her. So I believe that anyone can do that. Um, they can go out and fight for whatever they believe in without any superpowers. They can use their strength in terms of martial arts or the skills, or they can use their brain to fight um, for justice by being smart and um, that's why you have some smart people out there who fight for, just, for justice, going through court or just by using self-defense to defend the people who hurt them or harm them. So just the same to, she's a person who fight for the middle class, for the working people. And um, I think that, I think everybody can relate to that. Fighting for the working class stand out for me is because I believe that um, even though they might not need help, they know somebody who needs help. So it's, it's like, it's like um, everybody can relate to death, even though you don't have no one who in your family, immediate family died, but at least you know somebody. So it, it affects people in a different aspect. It doesn't have to be an immediate, it doesn't have to happen to you, but at least you know somebody. So I think just Angel is a good person to come in to help anybody who needs help, not necessarily you know, people who needs help, but they know someone who needs help, and she's there to help. <laughs> Justice Angel grew up in New York um, because her family, I, she came from Hong Kong and resided in New York, so she starts out in New York, and uh, why did I choose New York and not Phoenix or LA is because mm -hmm. I just feel that New York has more, for some reason to me, New York has more um, criminals. <laughs> That's how I see it, and uh, they, it seems like they need more help. So that's why I chose that, that city. Just as Angel is very conservative, but it doesn't mean it's me. <laughs> uh, she's conservative in terms of, um, she's very family oriented, very traditional, very um, family values. She believes in that, family tightness. She loves her elders. She believes that people res should respect elders. And, um, but, that's behind doors as far as uh, going out. She believes everybody should deserve uh, equality, equal opportunities, and uh, that's how I see it. So that's her personality. And she, to me, she's very humble and she doesn't feel that um, she needs to be bragged about. Even when people ask her in the story, they even ask her what's your name. And one of the lines that I gave her, my name is not important, it's what I believe in. And thus, the people call her Justice Angel, and that's how it became the title. <laughs> the costume, um, I wanted very exotic, something that beautiful, but yet she can fight in it. Uh, flexible enough for her to move around when she used her martial arts uh, skills. So the costume, uh, I wanted more Vietnamese traditions, because I, I love Vietnamese outside, it's a long dress, I even own a few, and um, I, just be, I just think that's something that I can bring out part of the culture that I was raised up. Even though the story is Chinese character, it has Vietnamese influence in there, or vice versa, and that's where the costume began. And the color I chose, purple, is because it represents loyalty and mystery, and that's how I see Chester's Angel herself. She's mysterious, but yet 
very loyal. And, um, and that's how the costume came. Mm -hmm. The team. Um, I am very loyal to my, the close people that I, my friends and who I believe in that are very uh, talented and very loyal to me and very, um, I said, very good to me in terms of getting things done for me. So I called um, Car Carol Willoughby, who I worked in the past, and I approached her with my project, Tessa St. Joe. I asked her to read it, and she read it, and she all liked it, and then we just start from there. And um, you know, trying to raise money. We've been trying to raise money uh, back in 2007, but you know, uh, we have good luck, bad luck, we're out of it. It's a liberal roller coaster ride, but. At this point, we're at the point where we believe that this time is going to work. So we're trying to raise the money to um, to get the production going again. And then I contact Joe Estevez, who's a good friend of mine, and um, he and I met through a fr we met through a mutual friend. And uh, he is a very funny man, very humble, and very talented. And as a matter of fact, I invested one of his short his a feature films that he, he did back in 2002 and that's how we became friends and, and decided to work together if we ever have a project. And then Jack Ong the same way, we met uh, each other through a mutual friend and um, with him he was very nice, he always come out to my premiere, every time I have a film premiere he comes out and he'll be the MC for me, which he did in two film projects, he came out and he did the MC for me. Um, I directed a short film, Torn, and also a feature film called To See Through Funny. He, both, he came out for both film and premiered for me and, and um, emceed me out and stuff like that. And then so I, got, I called him in to help me to do the film because um, I also wrote him a character in the story. And then I called out Tai Nguyen, who was, the costume, who was a fashion designer, and I've seen his fashion line and it's just beautiful and he, he makes he has, uh, he's very, he, he uses Vietnamese cost dress, and that's where I, I liked by him, because the costume is what I wanted, Vietnamese dress. So that's the reason I call him out and design the costume. I started, Just as Angel was the screenplay from the beginning, and I gave it to a few people to read it, and they go, Tiffany, this story has an element of a comic book. And I go, really? And they go, yeah, you should make this into a comic book because that's all these elements that a comic book structure would have. And I'm like, huh. So I never thought about it. And this is back in 20, uh, 2007. And when, um, and then fast forward to 2009, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do a comic book because I feel that that's what we need. Because every time I talk to a person, they keep telling me, comic book, comic book. So I'm like thinking, Okay, this must be a sign. So I got, I went and got uh, an illustrator and a colorist uh, on Craigslist, and they reply, and that's how I, I get uh, illustrator and colorist. And they, I form them together. So each issue has a different team. So my first team, who illustrated, uh, with, that illustrated issue one is Valerie Boris, and she lives out in Seattle. And she's um, beautiful, wonderful, talented illustrator who came in and drew the way I wanted, very cartoonish, because that's the style I was looking at. And she did a wonderful illustration. And then um, I have Caleb, who's a colorist, and he lives in Chandler, Arizona, and he came in and did the coloring. And um, after the first issue, I heard about the Phoenix Comic Con, and I'm like, oh my gosh, let's try to see if we can exhibit this, because this is a new book, maybe we can start some kind of buzz. So, not knowing what I was doing, I just went in, and it was the last minute they go, the Phoenix Comic Con was like three months before it premiered. They emailed me saying they only have like a few space left. So I'm like, okay, we gotta do this. So when I put my name in to pay for it, not realizing I pay for a corner booth, because that's the only space that left. Well, it came out the corner booth was the best thing for me. It brought a, a huge exposure from left and right, different directions. People saw who we were. We were dressed in purple. I had a model dress as Justice Angel who came out and with a bow staff and she performed martial arts and people were just drawn into our booth and were interested in the story, bought the book and that's how it began. 
and we came back again this year in 2013, and we did it again, and we even sold more than what we did in 2012. And then uh, we also went to New York Comic Con, which is the second biggest Comic Con in the nation, and we did even better than Phoenix Comic Con. It's double the size of fans up there because it, we I brought in people from Brooklyn, from um, New Jersey, from different corners of um, New York, and they came out. And I even have people came up and interview me, you know, on radio, for TV, even book reviews. And I even have fans who came back. And um, the story that stuck out me the most is because the comic book, to, they, it caters to a lot of young kids, a lot of females, even boys. They love it because of martial arts. Boys love it because of martial arts. Girls love it because it's a female hero. But then I also have adults who love the story too. And adults, they, I love the adults because the, the feedbacks I get from them, um, especially the female adults come back, they love the stories because Justice Angel is nothing, she's not a sex symbol, like most of the comic book character with, you know, big brass, whatever. Justice Angel's not. She's not about image, she's about her actions. So I get that kind of feedback from female. And one of the stories that stood out to me in New York, it was this young man in his 20s. He lives in New York, he came out, he bought the book. He goes, yeah, I want to try it. Never heard of you, you're independent, never heard of you, but I'm just going to buy it, the first issue. Okay, that's fine, because I released first and two, second issue at the same time. We just want to buy the first one because we want to try out what it is. Okay, no problem. He bought it on Friday. Saturday he came back, he goes, I want to buy your second one. I'm like, oh yeah, why is that? He goes, because my mother read your book and loved it, and she made me come back here to buy the second issue. And it's his mother. And I'm like, whoa, okay, so I got parents too to read this. That's wonderful. And his mother was like in his, her 60s. You know, so I have different ages of fans and we love Justice Angels. I believe the movie it would do even better because they have to bring out the wider audience, I believe. Uh, even the moviegoers. Because I even I have moviegoers who never read read comic book, but yet they read it and they liked it and they came out and told me. So I'm very happy that this story can this book can actually bring out different type of people to like it. So I wrote the script in twenty oh seven and screenplay first and then um, Put that aside and decided to convert the screenplay into a comic book in 2010. Publish it, self publish it uh, in 2013, and this year. And then, with the, because of the uh, high, get high feedbacks of my fans and huge buzz about it, I went back and revisit my screenplay and decided to make a movie out of it. And um, with the movie, I would like to, uh, with the movie, I approach all my friends to work with me to get the to, be, to get the money, and the money would like to approach getting some couple of name actors and the people that I would like to approach is Brenda Song, and the reason I decided her is because she, um, I seen her done some martial art films. It's called Wendy Wu. This was the movie she was in, and she was very awesome. And not only that, she really know martial arts in her life, so. I thought that she's perfect for the role, and plus she's, um, she's the only Asian that I know that's younger than 30. Um, so I think she's a wonderful actor to approach, and then um, also I um, would like to approach Zach Efron because he's a popular man, and plus um, uh, he's a feminist that I heard, so I think that uh, with this project, I think both, both actors uh, would do well with the character. And uh, as far as the money, we trying to we're raising money through Kickstarter to uh, get some uh, production money together and uh, start a, a movie production. And from there, we hope to get some distribution um, for it. So um, after the buzz of the comic book. I revisited the screenplay and decided to um, make a movie out of it because I think this is the right timing for it with a huge fan base of the comic book. And uh, with the movie version, I thought about it and um, think who would be best to play Justice Angel. And to me, I thought about it and at first I thought a couple of Hong Kong actresses. But then I realized Hong Kong actresses I mean, they know how to do martial arts. I mean, no, I hands down to them. 
But then I realized that with Hong Kong actresses, some might not speak English very well because of the accent. And two, they're not really a big name for American viewers. So um, with that aside, I have to think of somebody in Hollywood. And the only Hollywood, well, there's Lucy Liu, but guess what? I thought she's a little bit too old for the character. So I went, so I thought somebody in Hollywood, so the person that I think might be best for Hollywood, from, in Hollywood is Brenda Song, because I've seen a couple of her movies on Disney Channel, and she did some uh, martial art films, and I thought that she'd be great for Justice Angel, because of her martial art skills. So um, as far as the love interest character, um, I talked to my casting director, producer, Kara, and she suggested Zac Afron, and I go, wonderful, because he's a popular man who everybody knows about, and um, not only that, he's handsome. So from there, we thought that those two would be wonderful actors for the, for the movie version. We're starting a Kickstarter campaign to raise $100,000 for this Justice Angel movie, and I would like you to be part of the, uh, this opportunity for you to be part of the team, part of this production, part of this movie. Now we are raising money on Kickstarter and we are asking for, we are seeking $100,000. And this is an opportunity that we would like you to be part of the team, be part of the production, be part of the movie. Um, with this money, there are incentives, uh, not, uh, incentives of getting comic books, DVD copies, t-shirts, um, be part of the movie on set, be an extra in the movie, be, um, see me directing, see the actors, meet the actors, and even being in the, uh, going to the premiere red carpet once it's done. So, this opportunity is, uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to get involved and whatever contributions you can give, we will really appreciate it and, um, and always keep you, up, keep you updated and informed of the progress and everything else. Thank you very much. Now I'm raising $100,000 in Kickstarter and I'm very excited that we are doing this because uh, this is a great opportunity for everyone to be part of the team, part of the movie, part of production. Uh, the incentive is, is that you get a DVD copy, you get a, a, a copy of the, the comic books, you get to be part of the movies as an extra, or you be uh, part of the on the production, you get to see behind the scene, uh, meeting the actors, seeing me direct. Um, it's going to be fun. So to me, it's a very exciting opportunity for everyone who would contribute to this project. And uh, please stay tuned for any updates that we have and the uh, progressions of the whole uh, campaign. Thank you very much. So now we're raising $100,000 in Kickstarter, and we'll let you to be part of the team. This is a good opportunity for everyone to get involved. You can be, uh, if the incentive is you get a copy of the movie, you get uh, the you get the, the comic books, you get to be part of the production, being on set, being extra, see the actors, uh, meet the actors, uh, see me direct, and um, go to the premiere, red carpet. That's, I mean, to me, it's, it's a wonderful incentive, and I would like you to be part of it, and join us, make this movie happen, and um, 